sometimes. I just sit here and look at it. So the prelude is finished being polished. So I'm fixing to go out in the garage and take a look at it. My man Drew Caldwell with Custom Eyes out of Greenville uh, did the work for me. So let's go take a look, get a little walk around the other car and see how good it looks. I got my new cameraman with me now. I got the nine-year-old, not the eight-year-old. So uh, we're gonna see if he can uh, help me out here. So as you can take a look at it, it cleaned up really nice. And I'll get some close-ups of it as well. Because I tell you, one of the things that impresses me the most about the car is the window molding and the trim. So let me tell y'all where my passions for the Honda Prelude started. So it started somewhere around 2000. And uh, as a 14 year old, 15 year old in 2000, I was, uh, I had a friend that worked with my brother that uh, actually we knew from, from early in our childhood, but his, his name was Heath and he had a black 93 Prelude. And I always thought they were super cool and it looked really awesome. So I, I kind of always wanted one when I was 14, 15 years old. And then when I turned 16, I was working at KFC and uh, saved up enough money, got a small loan with the help of my mother. And we went and bought a black 92S way back to 2001. I think that was around May 2001. Um, I only had the car, come on Drew, probably only had the car uh, 10 or 11 months. And then I smashed it literally not even half a mile right down the road, not paying attention after school one day, um, ran right into the back of somebody and basically killed that car. But, uh, so that was in early, early 2002 when I wrecked it. So I bought another Prelude in May of 2002, which was a 95 special edition, which the special editions only came in green or gold, and they came with tan leather and a few other options, and I'll talk about that later. But uh, the green Prelude is the one that really sparked my back. So the green 1995 special edition, I bought it in May of 2002, right before I graduated high school, and uh, went through a long seven years with that car from, you know, Carbon fiber hood, carbon fiber lip, uh, RH Evolution C5, 17 inch wheels, and you know, things like that. But uh, the car basically from about 2006, 2007, I really didn't drive it much, so I just saved it for a few years. I got married in 08, car sat in the garage. I wound up selling it in 2009 because I was married, no children, and I told my wife it's time for me to build, you know, I wanted a project, I wanted to build something fast, something turbo. So, of course, I uh, went and got a Conquest which uh, if you've watched the introduction to the Conquest, you see the history on that and who I learned about the cars from there. So in 2009, sold the Prelude, bought the Conquest, still have the Conquest, but from 2009 to 2021, always in the back of my mind. So I knew I was gonna buy another one eventually. So somewhere around January of 2021, I started looking really hard for a Honda Prelude using the Facebook groups. And I found this specimen in West Virginia that wasn't even posted for sale. A gentleman was bragging about it on the Facebook groups because I was searching specifically for 95 special editions. And uh, he was bragging about this car here and uh, how clean it was and where he you know, bought it out of Georgia. So I sent him a message. He told me it wasn't for sale. We chit chatted. I basically made him a, a pretty generous offer you know, sight unseen because I knew it was exactly what I was looking for. I was looking for a special edition that had been garaged its whole life. So uh, he told me no thanks. I gave him all my information, told him to keep in touch if he ever wanted to sell it. And that's all it took was two weeks. And in two weeks, he sent me a message and said, hey man, I thought about it. I'm willing to sell it. You know, I've uh, considered your offer. And he told me, when can you come pick it up? So. We closed the deal, and within a week, I had the car in my possession, and here we are. 
So we'll take a look at some of the window trim, which is usually pretty rotten on these things by now. Quarter panel trim looks good. Back glass looks good. This one right here is always a mess as well. And this one's a little rotted on the top, but everything's still there. Uh, driver's side, I've got one dent in the window trim on the door, but the quarter panel looks good right there. I'll get that replaced. I'm not in too much of a rush. So let's take a look at the interior. So the only thing that's not original about the interior is the butt of the driver's seat, which you can see a slight color uh, difference between that and the passenger seat. But uh, outside of that, everything else, of course, other than the head unit, but the gentleman I bought the car from put the dash cam, the head unit, and a backup cam in the car, and it was done extremely clean. So I will not be swapping that out, but... I wish it had the factory CD cassette in there. But uh, as you can see the console, so we're working with a OEM fog light switch. So here's one of the things that for me sold me on the car is it's got the most unique dash out of any car from the 90s I've ever seen. That if you can just take a look. So these are the uh, electroluminescent gauges that came in 94 to 96 SIs and VTEX. So as you can see, the car's got 134 on it. I bought it with 132 about two years ago. So I'll put about a thousand miles a year on it. Um, so you can see the gauges stretch all the way across the car. Almost brings the passenger into it, right? So they get a feel for it as well. So just a few more angles of the inside of the car. So of course the leather is immaculate inside and out back front um like i said only thing that's been replaced was the butt of the driver's seat but i keep some old dirty floor mats in here because i've got some brand new tan oem one still in the box that i really don't even use ain't no point using them but let's take a look under the hood see what we're working with all right so i got the hood popped and raised so of course, all this, the uh, special edition came with the 2.3, so the H23A1, which was 160 horsepower from the factory. But, uh, you know, as for me, power doesn't mean anything in this car, because this car for me is more of a nostalgia thing. So it's all original under hood, aside from a, looks like we've got an aftermarket distributor cap and a, I've got an aftermarket radiator. It's not OEM, but uh, just stock replacements. But I had the engine bay detailed sometime last year. And I've only driven a car a few times since last year, so it's still holding up pretty well. But uh, it's fairly clean, all original. All right, so let's take a look in the trunk. So because the car rarely gets driven, you know, I drive it, like I said, less than 1,000 miles a year. And um, that's usually one weekend a month is when I drive it. But uh, I like to keep the trunk in more of a display state. And uh, I like to keep all the documentation for the car. Got a few OEM parts just for spares. Um, do have the factory brochures, the uh, accessory manuals, factory service manuals. And this is also pretty cool. I found this on eBay sometime last year. This is a press release kit uh, straight from Honda in March of 1995. See if I can focus on that. And this was from Honda sent to AAA so this is more or less documentation um, talking about the brand new special edition that's coming out in March 14th of 1995. So it's got pricing, it's got options, uh, it's got some pictures of the car itself and even came with a positive so that they, I guess I'm assuming they could put photos of the car straight to their magazine, you know. But uh, I thought that was really cool. Found that on eBay. And of course I got a big, big folder of receipts I just like having documentation. I think it's nice to have the history of your car and kind of everything that, you know, led up to Honda producing the car and uh, having that press release kit was uh, extremely informative. So let me talk a little bit about the wheels on the wall and what they mean, you know, when I have friends and family and stuff over, a lot of times they're like, why do you have 
three of the same set of wheels on you all. So let's take a look at the wheels. And uh, so as you can see, the Honda Prelude 95 Special Edition came with the five spoke Special Edition wheels with an eight center cap. But from 92 to 96, you could also get an upgraded dealer accessory wheel that either came with the red painted inlays or it came with the silver painted inlays. So they're extremely rare. I've never really seen them in person except when I purchased these. But uh, I bought them just because I seen them in a brochure, of course, in the Prelude itself. Um, so here's the brochure detailing the two wheel options that you could get 15 inch five spoke alloy with silver, 15 inch five spoke alloy with red. So like I said, they're pretty uncommon. So I thought it'd be cool to have all three sets of the five spoke wheels that were offered by Honda. Hey, so uh, as you can tell, I'm pretty passionate about it, but I uh, hope I didn't bore you too bad. Next time I try to get more car, less talk. But uh, since I got the intro out of the way for the Conquest and for the Prelude, hopefully there won't be much talking anymore. Maybe we get some action shots, some rolling shots and whatnot, but uh, try to make some fun videos with them. But uh, appreciate y'all watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And uh, until next time, I'll see y'all. Take it easy.